This video will be a uh, summary and sort of a quick explanation of what I learned from reading through the BERT paper. Uh, and so, you know, to really understand this, let's first uh, take a step back. So, and, and look at the landscape of 2018, which is when this paper was released. So, you know, the, the landscape in 2018, this was kind of the year of NLP. We, had, we saw a lot of different things happening. Uh, and one of them was OpenAI releasing the first GPT model. And so, uh, you know, GPT was built on top of, of the transformer architecture. Specifically, it used uh, just the decoder part of the transformer architecture. Um, and, and if you're unfamiliar with Transformer, I recommend um, some resources in the description. But so essentially, uh, the decoder was the one that had this masking uh, of the of the uh, attention mechanism. So as you can see, um, that it's basically on go only going from left to right. So you know it, this uh, is not possible, meaning it cannot look ahead, um, and it can only sort of go from left. Uh, to write. And obviously, you know, why this is uh, important is, uh, let's say, you know, we have um, a simple, like a simple sentence, uh, I like uh, banana. Then this GPT model, which is an autoregressive model, meaning it's going to try to predict the next word given the previous words. So let's say we just send in this I here. Then it's going to try to predict uh, I like, and then the next word right here, which is like, when it when it has these two, I like, it's going to try to predict uh, banana. So as you can see, this this red pattern, this is this is not allowed, right? Because if it is, then it's just going to steal and cheat and see what is the next word, take that one as its prediction, uh, and so you know that's going to be the case um, for GPT. But because of this, uh, we are not allowed to look ahead. Um, and the, this causes some, perhaps, uh, perhaps there, you know, you can imagine that there are situations and tasks where having this look ahead, this context from, from the future, uh, could be very, very valuable. And basically, this is what BERT does. So GPT uses uh, just a bunch of decoder uh, sort of blocks from the transformer architecture, just stacks them on top of each other. Um, and, and you know, the decoder has these masks, as we just saw. And then BERT instead used these encoder blocks, and the encoder doesn't have this masking effect. So it's bidirectional. And the fact, you know, that BERT is bidirectional, this is the sort of essence of BERT, which stands for bidirectional encoder, right? The encoder is bidirectional. So uh, bidirectional encoder representation from transformers. So as you can imagine, this is the, the key difference uh, of a GPT and BERT, namely this bidirectionality. So if we compare sort of BERT and OpenAI GPT, then we can see that um, Basically, that, that BERT has this effect of actually being able to go from right to left. And so we can have these right here. Uh, but obviously, right, and this is not possible um, in, the, uh, in GPT. And so you can imagine, though, that you know, this causes problems like we just discussed. So how do we actually train this? And perhaps to make this clear, uh, this is how the situation has uh, kind of unfolded uh, right now. I'm going to use bidirectional encoders. This is madness. Don't worry. I'll just use masks. Always use masks. Yeah, you know, so that's probably not what he meant. Uh, but let me try to explain what he, what he actually meant. So let's say we have some sentence. Um, I, I really like, I don't know, big bananas, lol. Um, and let's just say we've taken this sentence from like, um, yeah, from somewhere, uh, which, you know, this is not supervised. We just take some sentence and what we do is that we randomly remove, uh, some words. So let's say we remove that word. 
uh, and this is kind of a short sentence, so let's just say we remove one word. What we do, uh, or what Bert decided to do, is remove that one and then replace it with a mask token. And the idea is now that, you know, uh, we can't cheat because, uh, it, it, rather, it can't cheat, right? We just send this, this in, I really mask big bananas, LOL. So then its task is to predict that this word was like. And um, and so, um, yeah, so this is how the pre-training of BERT uh, worked. Uh, and the reason, um, you know, why we didn't do like GPT is because it, it's bidirectional, so it can cheat. But in this task, it can't. And we they removed uh, about 15% of the words. Now, they actually used a second pre-training method as well. Uh, but um, this is the, the essential and the most important part. Uh, if you want sort of the details of it, you can uh, check out the uh, the paper if you'd like. And so if we look at the sort of the overview of how you go about training BERT, uh, you, you first, you use semi-supervised learning and you train it on, you know, really, really large amounts of text from, from books and Wikipedia and so on. And you do this by predicting the masked word, as we talked about. So after you've done this pre-training, you then take uh, sort of the step two of training BERT is to have a supervised training uh, uh, on a you know, very specific uh, task on a labeled data set. And so you fine tune the entire model on a specific task. Um, so the bulk of the training is done on step one. All right, and, and then, you know, you might be wondering, well, what is this, uh, these tasks that we can use BERT for? And how do we modify BERT uh, to actually work on these multiple different uh, kinds of tasks? So in the paper, they presented uh, different ways of structuring BERT for different kinds of tasks. So if we look at the top right first, where we have single sentence classification tasks. So... As an example, let's just say this is a movie review or something. Uh, and what we want to predict is uh, zero or one. Basically, is this review of this movie, is it negative, right, zero? Or is it uh, positive, which would be uh, one? So as you can see, first of all, is that BERT has these, um, first, this CLS token. This CLS token stands for uh, classifier. Then it has, you know, token 1, token 2, up to token n. And these are, you know, this is the sentence uh, which has been tokenized, which we then run through and get these embeddings and so on. Basically run it through these stacks of, uh, and then, you know, we run it through these stacks of decoders, uh, decoder blocks. But so uh, this CLS, this first uh, token, stands for classifier. And this means that what is outputted from this one uh, is what we're going to then send through a linear layer, right? So the output, whatever embed, like sort of embedding size, output size this is, we're going to run this through a linear layer to then predict zero or one uh, binary. And so, you know, all of the other outputs, T1, uh, T2, Tn, all of them, we're just going to uh, ignore them and just use the one from the first. All right, hopefully uh, you follow um, how we structure BERT for this kind of task. So if we have then um, sort of sentence pair classification tasks, um, and so let's just say, you know, we have two sentences and we want to know, are these two sentences similar or are they not similar? And, you know, you, you can check out these data sets here if you want some more examples of what you can actually do for sentence pair classification tasks. But what you do is that you still have this CLS, this classifier token, and then you have sentence one right there. And then you have a separator token, and then you have tokens for sentence two. And then you do the exact same thing. So you run it through, and then you take this right here, you run it through a linear layer, and then you get your, uh, your classification. So that's um, how you would structure it for uh, sentence pair classification tasks. Then if we look at something like, um, let's say this one at the bottom left, this is uh, question answering. 
So you have a question uh, and then you have a reference te text. So let's say, you know, you have a Wikipedia article um, about, I don't know, like Elon Musk or something. And let's just say you have a question about Elon Musk. And so the idea is that you send in the question. Um, and again, you have this CLS token. And then you send in the separator. And then you send in the paragraph, which in this case would be the, uh, the um, article, Wikipedia article of Elon, Elon Musk. And basically, uh, you want to predict um, sort of, um, and by the way, question answering uh, doesn't mean that it's going to generate its own answer. It's going to specify exactly where that answer is in the reference text. So it's going to output just a start and end token, uh, meaning uh, basically like uh, S would be like 10 uh, and then end token would be like 15. So in between those, those five words in between uh, index 10 and 15 is where the answer is given in the reference text. All right, so it, j question answering, I don't know, it, it confused me, but that's not question answering. This is, this is what they mean. All right, so, uh, you know, they take these uh, outputs, T1, all of them, um, and they run all of them through um, basically like a, a, a linear layer. So we have one linear layer for start, the start index, and then we have another linear layer for the uh, end index. So basically, you know, we run it through BERT, we run uh, each of these through, um, through, through you know, the linear, both of those linear layers, and we get probabilities of where the start index should be and then the end index. So we just take, you know, the, the highest probability of both of those and that's our start and end span of the reference text, which answers the uh, the question we had in the beginning. Hopefully that was clear. Uh, sort of the last example that they have is if we used it for uh, named entity recognition. So if we have some sentence, then maybe we want to um, specify like this first token, this first word in the sentence. Is this uh, like a is this a, a verb or is this a person or is this a location? And so uh, we output sort of a, a token for each word. Uh, basically, sort of what class each word belongs to. And in this situation, you can imagine obviously that you know having information from being able to um, to go from the future sort of uh, forward steps and then to this one to sort of a, a larger context could be very valuable. And this is where, you know, BERT is um, perhaps much better uh, suited uh, than a GPT model, for example. So, um, yeah, that's the uh, named entity recognition example. And so hopefully now you have an idea of how we use BERT for different kinds of uh, tasks. All right, so the question then is like, uh, what is BERT uh, not good for? So um, my interpretation is that it's not good for... Um, uh, basically, when you want to generate text, uh, so GPT is an autoregressive model, um, which um, you know, you know, it predicts the next word given the previous one. It, it it's good at generating stuff. Uh, so, for example, like if we would want to use BERT for um, like a translation, perhaps, or I don't know, like a, um, like a, you know, a chat bot or something like this. Uh, these would be examples where probably you know, BERT is not good. Um, I, in fact, I would, I don't even know exactly how you would use it for those um, because of this bidirectionality. So it, in my view, it's mostly good for um, things that are related to classification, but definitely more broad than just sentiment analysis. Uh, you, you, you can have, you know, multiple sentences, these um, question answering systems, and um, it seems to be really, really good at understanding language. But anyways, that's it for this video on my explanation of BERT and what I learned from reading through the paper. If you think there are things that I, I missed, uh, please leave a comment. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope this was useful.